In this video, we're going to talk about what Kubernetes operator is, why did this operator concept even emerge, and when you should use operators. To give you an overview, operators are used mainly for stateful applications. So we'll first compare how Kubernetes manages stateless and stateful applications, and then compare deploying and managing stateful applications without an operator versus deploying it with a Kubernetes operator. By the way, I have a separate video where I show you how to use Kubernetes operator in practice using Prometheus operator example so that you have a theoretical understanding of the concepts and also see how it's used in practice. Let's go through an example use case. Let's say we are deploying an example web application in a Kubernetes cluster. So you create a deployment, a config map with some configuration attributes for your application, a service and the application starts. Maybe you scale the application up to three replicas if one replica dies, Kubernetes automatically recovers it using its built-in, what's called a control loop mechanism, and creates a new one in its place. If you release a new version, you just adjust the deployment configuration and all replicas get restarted with new version. Backups, you don't need backups because your web application is stateless. So basically, once you deploy the application, you don't have to sit there and control that your application is running properly. And when you carry out these small adjustments and changes, like update or scale up, it works pretty much without problems. And the reason is because all of these tasks that I mentioned are automated by Kubernetes using this control loop mechanism. So Kubernetes knows what your desired state is, because you stated using configuration files and it knows what the actual state is and it automatically tries to match the actual state always to your desired state. And that's why it automatically recreates a pod that just died or restarts the pods with the updated image version, etc. So all this works pretty much without problems. That's great. Now for that web application, you need a database so that you have some data persistence for your application. But for stateful applications like databases, this whole process isn't as straightforward. These applications need more handholding when you create them while they're running and when you destroy them. So throughout its whole life cycle. So Kubernetes cannot automatically do all this stuff um, with stateful applications. Why? Because when you create three replicas of a MySQL application, for example, all of these three replicas are different. They aren't identical replicas. Each has its own state and identity, and that makes things a little bit more complicated. This means they need to be updated and destroyed in a certain order. There must be a constant communication between these replicas or synchronization so that the data stays consistent and a lot of other details need to be considered as well. And these details will vary for each application. So MySQL will have its own specific way of doing this. Postgres will have its own. Elasticsearch will have its own and so on. So you can really have a standard solution for all of these applications and put it in Kubernetes to automate the whole process. If you want to learn more details about comparison between stateless and stateful applications in Kubernetes, I have a more detailed comparison video on that topic, so you can check it out here. Typically, that's why stateful applications require manual intervention, no matter whether they run on Kubernetes or on a traditional server environment. So they require people who operate these applications, so human operators. However, in Kubernetes, this could be a problem because having to manually update and maintain an application in Kubernetes kind of goes against the main Kubernetes concept, which is automation, less human intervention, self-healing attributes, etc. And this could be a reason to say, you know what, I don't have the one thing that Kubernetes promises, which is automation here. So I might as well host my stateful application outside the Kubernetes cluster. But there are also applications that you need in Kubernetes, like Prometheus monitoring um, or etcd store, which are stateful applications. So in any case, there is a need for an alternative to managing stateful applications. 
and that alternative is supposed to be the operator. So what is an operator and how does it solve this problem? Operator basically replaces this human operator with a software operator. So all the manual tasks that DevOps team or DevOps person would do to operate a stateful application is now packed into a program that has the knowledge and intelligence about how to deploy that specific application, like Postgres or Prometheus and so on, how to create a cluster of multiple replicas of that application, how to recover when one replica fails, etc. This means that tasks are automated and of course reusable. So if you have two Kubernetes clusters with the same setup, you don't have to manually configure and then maintain these applications on both environments, but rather you have one standard automated tool that does this on both environments, which means that the benefit of having this automated or software operator versus the human operator scales and becomes bigger the more complex your application and the more environments you deploy that application in. So how does operator do this? At its core, it has the same control loop mechanism that Kubernetes has that watches for changes in the application state. Did a replica die? Then it creates a new one. Did an application configuration change? It applies the up-to-date configuration. Did the application image version get updated? It restarts it with a new image version. So you can think of an operator as a custom control loop in Kubernetes. It also uses CRDs, which stand for custom resource definitions in Kubernetes, which is basically a custom Kubernetes component. So by default, you have these default components in Kubernetes, which are deployment, stateful set, config map, etc. On top of that, you can create your own custom Kubernetes components, and that is CRDs. I will explain the concept of CRDs and how to use them in more detail in a separate video, but this is just for basic understanding. So operator takes the basic Kubernetes resources and its controller concept as a foundation to build upon and on top of that, it includes the domain or application specific knowledge to automate the entire life cycle of the application it manages or operates. So to summarize, Kubernetes can manage the complete life cycle of stateless applications in a fully automated way, because these applications do not have business logic for deployment or for running and maintaining them. So Kubernetes doesn't need to know any application specific logic to automatically create, update, delete, and maintain these applications. Whereas for stateful applications, Kubernetes natively or internally doesn't have all the knowledge required to automate the process of deploying every single stateful application. And because of that, it uses these extensions, which are the operators and it uses its own operator for each different application. Now, who creates these operators? Operators are built for each application, as I mentioned, by those that are experts in the business logic of installing, running, and updating that specific application. So for example, if you want to create a cluster of four MySQL replicas and deploy and run them in Kubernetes, a team that has a domain specific knowledge about MySQL application creates an operator that contains all this knowledge about how to create a MySQL cluster, how to run it, how to synchronize the replicas, how to update, maybe even how to do backups and all this stuff. And that package becomes an operator. And for each such application, it could be Elasticsearch, Prometheus, etc. store, there will be a separate operator. This means there are already operators out there for many applications created by the community, which you can use. So you don't have to create them yourself. There is an operator hub website where you can look them up. There are GitHub repositories and other places where you can search them and look them up. But if you wanted to create your own operator, there is an operator SDK that allows developers or these uh, expert teams to create an operator themselves. 
So this was the operator concept shortly explained. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions regarding the Kubernetes operators. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.